Hi guys, what's going on? This is Kurt here. I'm back with car reviews and today I'm doing a video review on this VW Golf 5 GTI. This is actually my personal car. I've owned this car now for six months. I've done 8,000 kilometers in this car and I've been left very impressed. I'm going to do an unbiased review today so that you can see if in 2020 the VW Golf 5 GTI is still relevant and makes a good buy. 9SA GTI cars have a cult following and they have a lot of love from South Africans. South Africans love the VW brand but they really love uh, the GTI cars, both the Polo and the Golf GTI. Now this VW Golf 5 GTI that we're going to review today is the model that was released in South Africa. Now across the world there were a couple of different flavors um, of more higher output uh, models uh, released and also lower spec when it comes to interior. The one that we have in South Africa is pretty much a standard high spec model but it only came out in 147 kilowatt and 280 newton meters for the engine the other countries they all received that engine power plant as well but they also received the more powerful edition 30 and pirelli edition that's the ones with the ko4 turbo we're not going to cover that today we're covering the sa spec car 5 gti let's have a look inside now this is really where this car shines because it's luxurious but it's subtle it's not over the top it's not boy racer you have a flat bottom leather steering wheel you have the gti badge just to remind you that you're not in a regular uh, model or you're not in a diesel uh, so it's got that sport feeling inside and what really gives it that sport feeling are these seats oh my word if there's a thing that i love most about this car is absolutely these ricardo bucket seats they give you enough uh, support on the sides so if you really corner hard with a car that you can sit snug uh, but they're also luxurious in the sense that it's comfortable leather that you sit on and they heat it we just had temperatures reaching one degree zero degrees in Kimberley now and these puppies oh my word I put them on five and I am super comfortable I can tackle the cold uh, inside you also have a uh, dual climate control um, Multifunction steering wheel was an extra on this car. Most people have it, uh, but it's nice. I really use it. It's, uh, it's nice to have, but I really use it because I don't listen to music. And that's actually the only thing that you can control on this um, steering wheel is music. Louder, softer, um, and of course you can access the menu. Now, this car inside really works for many people. Small families, uh, if you're a single person, even if you're quite a, even if you're quite a medium sized to large family. And that is because uh, just how big the boot is. The boot in this car is absolutely massive. I can chuck a stroller at the back. I can go to town. I can go to shopping uh, with my small family in the car. And there's ISOFIX at the back for my son seat. There's ABS, uh, there's traction control. There's just, Everything that you would expect in a modern car is in here. And that's what makes the Golf 5 GTI still relevant today. That all the safety features that you would expect from a car, it's got it. Airbags, everything, everything safety features here, you've got it. You also have traction control. So there's no sport mode really with this car. It's just uh, traction control on or traction control off. And uh, yeah, other than that, really nice place to be. Uh, we've got some aluminium finishes over here on the side. Just some nice touches to make you feel that uh, you're in a nice sporty model. Now, there isn't that many cons with the interior, but it seems VW continued with the same supplier of the interior material when it comes to these plastics because this reminds me of my Golf 4 GTI. They are peeling. They look like they've been laying in the sun for a while. And that's the only problem I have uh, with this interior is that these plastics are peeling and you can't really plastic dip them because then you lose these logos that's over them so it's a bit annoying that you can't diy fix it i don't know how you would diy fix this without actually just removing the black coating on it completely um, another uh, noticeable um, con is just the instrument cluster is, uh, is from the noughties it's literally red uh, pixelated that's all you got it's very simple there's just rpm on the left and uh, your speedometer on the right and that's it Many people who I have spoken to, even people who have now Golf 6, Golf 7.5, GTIs, Golf Rs, they all love the look of the Golf 5 GTI. It's got that fat squat look. It just looks squatted, wide. It's got the round edges, so it looks a bit on the modern side, and that's really what people love is the shape of this car. I love it. Um, and even the colors that you get in this car. This car is a black. I think it's Diamond Black Pearl, that's the name. But the best color by far for me is United Grey. And there's a good couple of other colors um, that you got 
with a car 5 GTI. Now up front, you could spec this car with Zenon lights. This car that we in right now doesn't have Zenon lights, so it does look a bit old, is probably the right word, but uh, it's okay for me. As I mentioned, I really care about performance and I can live with those lights. They're okay, uh, I don't have an issue with them, but yeah, exterior wise, that's definitely a feature that makes the car 5 GTI look more modern. And if you wanna buy one, if you can get one with Zenon lights, Definitely, you should be doing that. On the outside, you could also spec the car with a sunroof. Uh, this car does have a sunroof. I'm not a fan of sunroofs personally. Maybe you are. Um, I just don't like it. Low speeds, I feel it rattles. At high speed, it's wind noise. So for me, if I could have spec this car. I wouldn't have taken one with a sunroof. Then on the outside, we also have, uh, you know, cues that this is not a normal golf. That's, of course, we have the GTI badge on the grill. We have red piping around the honeycomb grill. We have red calipers. We also have 18-inch uh, diamond cut wheels on this car. Most of the cars have 18-inch wheels, but 17-inch was actually the standard wheel on this car, and it wasn't a diamond cut wheel. So the 18-inch diamond cut wheels on this car was actually... An extra, what you will notice on these cars with these 18 inch wheels that are diamond cut is because of the age, they definitely need a refurb. So they've either been curbed or the clear coat on the wheel will actually peel and it just looks terrible. Like these wheels need a refurb. I did receive a quote to refurbish them for 10K. Ooh, that hurts. I'm not gonna go with that. I actually already bought another set of wheels because at 10K, really, I have many options. So I bought another set of wheels, which I'm gonna put on this car, and I'm gonna do a DIY refurb on these wheels myself. Um, other than that, outside, it's pretty much golf. No boy racer, subtle, simple. It's just golf. You just mix in with the rest of traffic, and the guys that do know you have a GTI, they'll give you a nod. They'll look at you. Even in today's age of 2020, uh, this car is still getting attention. People still look at me. On my way here to do this review, um, I was giving it beans, and there was a couple of guys uh, standing with VWs, and the car still grabs the attention. So clearly, people are still looking at the Golf 5 GT, and they must like the way it looks. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Now this car that we in right now is technically not stock, it's Durban stock. In Durban they would call the stock, you know, car's got a couple of mods and they call it stock. So this is a Durban stock car, it's got an intake on, it's got a downpipe on. And I installed that purely because I'm going to do a KO4 turbo upgrade on this car. I'll give you a little bit more details about that shortly. Um, but let's get into the nitty gritty of the engine. So these engines uh, came out 147 kilowatt and 280 newton meters and they are the first 2 liter turbo direct injection engines for Volkswagen. So the engine fitted in this car was a big transition from what we previously had. In the Golf 4 GTI, we had what is known as port injection, where you have a fuel rail and the injectors are actually sitting in the fuel rail. Whereas in this car, the injectors are actually sitting inside the cylinder head. Now the benefits of direct injection is that you get better fuel consumption. Fuel consumption in this car is not terrible but in general, you also get better performance. Now, there were two engine codes for the Golf 5 GTI. There was the AXX and the BWA. AXX, you'll probably hear if you're shopping around, AXX, BWA, which one do I get? It's pretty simple. The AXX was the first gen engine for this car, and that was produced from 2005 to uh, mid-2006, and then from mid-2006 uh, till 2009, we got the BWA. And why is there two different engine codes? Because there are differences between the engines. The BWA essentially has uh, upgraded engine internals. So that would be the pistons, the rods, uh, all the internals inside the pistons, not all, some of them are different. I don't know the exact details of all of them, but some of them are different. And they also change the compression uh, on the BWA engine. So the BWA engine is running a higher compression uh, than the AXX. You should get the one that's the best maintained. That's the one you should be getting. So if you're shopping and you see AXX, PWA, don't care too much about that. PWA, yes, is the better engine, but if you get a really well-maintained AXX engine, you're good to go. Now, these engines do tend to have a ticking noise. They sound a bit lifterish. is probably the word <laughs> that I would use um, even myself. Um, 
I have investigated uh, noises, you know, around my engine. I've asked a couple of other guys, do you think this is normal? These cars, they do sound a bit ticky, 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 ticky. When I change this oil to Castrol 5W40, uh, that noise has subsided a little bit. But overall, these engines do sound a bit tappity. They, they're just noisy. And uh, if your engine is making an abnormal noise on idle, you should probably check it out. But if you go test drive one and you've never heard how Golf 5 GTI engine sounds, uh, they are a bit uh, tickety. That's <laughs> I've mentioned so many different words now, but they do have a ticking noise to them and that noise can be normal But if it's a loud consistent noise and you're worried about it You should probably check it out before you proceed to buy the car now There are a couple of common engine issues on this car But they are not that bad and they shouldn't steer you away from buying golf fire cheetah I'll quickly go over them. It's high pressure fuel pump failure. It's a premature wear of the cam follower it's also uh, oil pump failure, but those are very, very rare. I've done some research. I've spoken to some tuners. Um, oil pump failure would normally set me completely off from buying a car, but they're actually not that common. There's also the PCV failure. Now, this car has had its PCV replaced. I can't talk about the car 5 GTI's engine without mentioning K04. Now, if you've seen K04 around the internet or you've heard people talk about K04 and GTI, what's K04? K04! K04 is fun. K04 is power. K04 is the turbo that's fitted uh, to the more powerful models in the VW and Audi range. So think uh, uh, the Golf 6R, uh, the Golf 6 Edition 35, and uh, also the Scarocco R, the Audi TTS. There's quite a few models uh, inside uh, the VW range that's fitted with this 2 liter turbo direct injection engine as a base. But they have different internals, so different pistons and different conrods, and they have the K04 turbo. That's why you'll hear some people talk about doing a K04 conversion on a Golf 5 GTI or even a Golf 6 GTI is quite common. And all it really means is that they're going to take um, the core parts that need that's needed for the conversion. It is the fuel injectors, and that is the turbo and the intercooler. That's the basic things that you need. There are additional mods that you can put on like intake downpipe that would help, but those are the basics that you need. And that would convert this car from 147 kilowatt to 200 plus kilowatt, depending on what supporting mods you have. And that's really what K04 is. K04 is really just the upgraded turbo that's fitted to the more powerful models um, that's based off this engine. Let's chat about the gearbox. Now, the VW Golf 5 GTI, you get in a manual, six-speed manual, and also six-speed DSG. The manual, uh, what can I say about it? It's a good gearbox. I do think that the throw is a bit long. Uh, this is not a, a full-out sport type of car, like in a Type R or Honda S2000 or a Renault Megane um, Cup. You have a, a more focused gearbox, much, much more focused. It feels more crisp. Uh, the shift is much shorter, even on Toyota 86. The Golf 5 GTI, because it appeals to the masses, you know, your mom, wife, sister, and uncle, um, the throw and the feel on the gearbox, especially the manual, is not uh, that exciting but it's okay and it's lovable. I'm probably gonna put a short shifter um, on this car, uh, but it's okay. Then you get the DSG gearbox. The DSG is also a six speed, uh, needs to be serviced every two years or 60,000 kilometers. And when it's working, probably the best gearbox you'll drive uh, on the planet. But unfortunately, it does suffer from uh, mechatronics uh, failure and uh, everything about the gearbox is just expensive. The DSG service is expensive. If anything breaks, it's expensive. Mechatronic failure is um, common. And uh, if you're in the market for one, I would say avoid a DSG. So I'm behind the wheel of the Golf 5 GTI now and we're really gonna get to understand why people enjoy driving this car why they love this car and i think the reason for that is because it's so comfortable it's not an intimidating car to drive at the end of the day it's actually just a golf and it gives you that complacent drive that you expect uh, from a golf so although it's got a sportier drive it's still very easy to drive i've thrown the keys of this car uh, to my brother, my mother, my wife, my dad, my friends, family members, cousins of mine, they've all driven this car. And the first thing I ask them when they give me the key back is, how was the drive? How was the experience? And almost all of them, 
have a smile on their face and it's always positive positive. and what makes it so enjoyable is the fact that uh, the power delivery a uh, low down is uh, very noticeable and punchy so I'm at a robot now it's pretty standard I'm gonna pull away and you'll be able to see just with minimal revs so just minimal the I'm off the mark just like that I'm just going I'm not I'm not even putting in effort and uh, that's really the beauty of uh, of this package and this car in standard form I'm not talking about KO4 conversions or stuff like that just this car standard the KO3 turbo that's uh, fitted to this car is an absolute perfect match for this uh, 2 liter uh, 16 valve turbocharged engine it just makes the car so drivable and it just feels so fast like if you're driving in town the way I'm driving now it's absolutely amazing you don't feel the weight of the car this car weighs about 1.4 ton you don't feel the weight at all now it's not all that positive when it comes to the drive now I'm not a big fan of uh, 18 inch wheels there are 18 inch wheels on this car we're driving in Kimberley uh, this, this is probably where they uh, you know make bottles for the whole of South Africa and ship them out so I'm dodging bottles every day with these 18 inch wheels and driving in town is a little bit annoying for me so I'm gonna change them down to 17 I'm gonna run a 45 so I'm gonna go from a 40 to a 45 uh, profile tire so I'm gonna have more sidewall and uh, I'm hoping to get much more comfort from the car so 18s might not be a problem for you but for me the 18s uh, they do uh, drive a little bit hard but that's just my preference now one thing that you must know is that because this is an old car um, you can't expect when you go test drive this car you check one out you can't expect this to behave like a new car that it's absolutely not and I'm talking about rattles this car has many rattles um, uh, interior inside the car and uh, I find that the more I own this car the more rattles just creep up like my latest rattle is over here on the on this window mechanism it sounds like something um, is loose you know and that's just because of the age of the car it's an old car and uh, yeah that's just something that you can experience now one thing my rear passengers have complained about and uh, I've sat at the back as well to experience it myself is that sitting at the back so if you sit at the back of this car the drive is super hard and I've experienced that myself and I think it's because of the sport suspension and the tires that I just mentioned and that is just something that you're gonna have to live with so if your um, significant other your girlfriend or your wife or whoever's gonna sit at the back of this car if you go test drive this car it's a good idea to have them at the back just to make sure that they are comfortable with the level of harshness on the suspension um, that you will get but to use this car on a daily extremely practical uh, let's talk about the weight on the steering because you can't review a performance car without doing that uh, the weight is uh, it's a little bit on the heavy side but there's a lot of feedback so I never feel that I'm not in control of this car there's a lot of feedback I feel like I'm always in control and I feel like if I point this car somewhere that it would go and I can have confidence that it would go I have noticed one thing about this car though which throws my confidence a little bit off is the tail is a little bit happy so when I mean happy is when you're driving this car hard and you're driving into a corner hard the tail can be unpredictable I've experienced this both with the traction control on and off and uh, if you go do some research online on the various forums you'll see that there's many guys that have commented uh, about this now these things that you can do some modifications to improve it but it's just something to watch out for I would definitely recommend uh, that you actually take this car to a track day uh, wherever your local city's track is uh, just find out when they have a track day do a track day in this car that will just bond you with this car <laughs> that's what it will do you'll get to know this car a lot better and you'll know where the shortcomings are within the suspension so I've actually taken this car to Kalani and in its current trim I did a 14.9 second quarter mile which is pretty respectable for what you get in this car and the performance uh, uh, you know in a straight line is more than enough uh, for most people the fuel consumption in town absolutely horrible I averaged 12.5 
uh, to 13 really uh, with my driving style which is quite a heavy foot and then when you do long distance driving I see between 7 and 8 which again is fantastic so uh, if you plan to do a little bit of town driving and long distance it's gonna be fine if you're just gonna do town driving uh, it's not gonna be such a good experience I get about 450 on a tank so if you're looking for fuel consumption you gotta buy this car you're not gonna get it for the Golf GTI, there will always be many competitors. The Golf GTI is almost like the M3, you know, everybody wants to be better um, than the GTI, everybody wants to be better than the M3. So your natural competitors are Focus ST, Astra OPC, and uh, you could probably get an Audi A3 with the same engine if you want a little bit more refined car that's more focused on luxury, you can get an Audi. Uh, let's chat about the Astra OPC and the Ford Focus ST. Now the Ford Focus ST is a lovely car. I actually love the engine inside that car and the performance that you get from the 2.5 uh, cylinder engine. The only issue with that car is fuel consumption. The fuel consumption on those 2.5 uh, cylinder ST's are terrible and you would hate your life if you drive that car day to day, especially in like traffic and that. And uh, with Astra, again, horrible fuel consumption. Astra OPC, uh, a little bit different. You know, you'll be a little bit different. I know of a few people who have rebuilt those engines. I don't know if it's a common issue on those engines with the Astra OPC and the Corsa OPC. But there are quite a few people who have rebuilt their engines. Um, maybe it was just due to poor maintenance on the owners i don't know but uh, astro pc not that popular in south africa not something i would buy um yeah just it's just not popular then your other options are you can get the audi a3 with the same engine as this car two liter turbo fsi same engine as the 8p audi a3 uh, the two liter turbo uh, nice car similar car doesn't look as good as the GTI so uh, you can lose out there with looks and then of course if you want something completely different and boy racer <laughs> you can get a Honda Civic Type R and that of course is a 2 liter 60 valve normally aspirated uh, car so uh, if you up in the reef you know Joburg, Kimberley, Bloom you know if you're not at the coast that Honda is gonna suck everybody's gonna smoke you at the drags so should you buy a Golf 5 GTI in 2020? Absolutely yes. I've had this car for six months. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna do my KO4 conversion. I'm gonna do a couple more mods, change tires, enjoy my car. The Golf 5 GTI is still very relevant in 2020 and it's still producing uh, the power that you expect from a modern hatch and it's extremely usable. That's the best part, usable power. That's the best part about this car. Don't forget that maintenance can be expensive so when you shop, make sure you want to check out full service history. If it's DSG, you want to make sure it's full service history on the DSG gearbox as well. Service every two years and uh, every 60,000 kilometers. So make sure that's all done. And then, yeah, just make sure you get a car that is probably not modified. Uh, because guys that have modified cars, uh, they take it to different software tuners. And one guy is a good tuner, one guy is not a good tuner. And, uh, you know, it could just mess up your car. So try to get a stock one if possible. The Golf 5 is amazing. I will highly recommend it. Go out there and get yourself one.